Hello, my name is Thomas Kennedy, and today I'm here to talk to you about Brian Michael Cox. Brian's hands down has got to be one of my favorite music producers in the industry today and of all time. He's someone who's worked extremely hard to get to where they're at, and that's something I admire in any person for that matter. I didn't really know all too much about Brian until I did all the research on him, and by doing that, it only made me admire him more and the work that he's done. Brian's heavily involved in the R&B genre, and that happens to be one of my favorite types of genres to listen to. I was listening to music by him that he produced before I even knew who he was. To me, he's somebody who's always able to get the best performance out of any artist he works with. He brings out that raw emotion of a singer or an artist, and when you're capable of doing that, you instantly have a great record on your hands. He doesn't try to do too much on the majority of his records. To him, simple is better, and it works. If people question that, it can easily just look back at all the hit songs he's worked on throughout his career, along with the amount of talent that he's worked with, just to name a few of the artists that he's managed to work with. So far, he's worked with Mariah Carey, Whitney Houston, Mary J. Blige, Usher, Trey Songs, Chris Brown, even Tony Stewart, and the list just goes on and on. A little bit background info about Brian. Brian was born in Miami, Florida, but he was raised in Houston, Texas. He is the only producer to break the Beatles record of consecutive number one hits on the Billboard's Top 100 charts. Now that's pretty impressive to me. He's had an outstanding 280 records to put on the chart, which is just unbelievable and only cements him as one of the greatest producers of all time at just 35 years old too. Brian managed to get his start in music by when he was in high school. He was producing for a demo by some singer, you might know her, she goes by the name Beyonce. And it just so happens that it was Beyonce's father that encouraged him to keep on producing. Oh, and by the way, that demo that he was producing for her just so happened to be a future multi-platinum album for a group that goes by the name of Destiny's Child. You might have heard of them too. After a couple years of producing that demo tape, he managed to score an internship at Noontime Records which at the time was home to artists such as Ashanti and Jazzy Fay. Also at that label, he happened to meet a producer by the name of Jermaine Dupri. With the help of Jermaine, he managed to get his first hit record within a year of being there. Jermaine showed him the ropes and helped get the point across to him that sometimes, the simpler the record is, the better it is. Ryan also has a ton of awards to his name, something that very few people in this world are able to say. He's had 19 number one songs on the Billboard charts, 7 Grammy Awards, and to top it off, he's won the Billboard and CSAC Songwriter of the Year an incredible 6 times in a row. No one else has done that. He's also been named one of the top 10 producers of the decades of the 2000s by Billboard magazine. And only to cement his greatness as a producer, he has the number one R&B song of the decade, Mary J's Boz, Be Without You. He also happens to have another song on that list as well. He has Usher's Burn record at number 26. To have two records on the top 100 R&B records of the decade, to me is inspiring. It makes me want to better myself and be able to say I have some of those awards one day as well. Brian's heavily influenced my music. I always try to make it simpler because to me, most people listen to that more than a complicated record. One day I hope to work with Brian and get the chance to work under him and learn everything I can from him. That's all.